What's going on guys? It's Scoop P back again with another video. And today I just wanted to talk about VLOOKUP and Apple numbers. I've been looking around the internet and looking on YouTube and I don't see a lot of videos or a lot of instructions on basically how to use VLOOKUP and Apple numbers. I use VLOOKUP all the time in Microsoft Excel. I, and, um, and for work, it's, it's about almost an everyday thing that I use VLOOKUP. So I wanted to make this video today, guys, to show you that it is possible to use VLOOKUP in Apple Numbers. It's a little different. And first of all, you just need to understand how Apple Numbers work. It's a little different than VLOOKUP, just about the sales and the columns and how the functions and everything is at the bottom now and instead of the top. It's kind of like flip-flop. So if you see here, you'll see all of your tabs is at the top, and then you'll see in a minute all of my text and everything is at the bottom. And I, I don't know why Apple did that, and it may be a way to reverse it, I just haven't had time to go in and play with it, guys. So we're just going to roll with this today. So what we're going to do today and what we're going to do first is just do VLOOKUP. And I just want to explain a little bit what VLOOKUP is. It's basically a vertical lookup. It is going to compare two tables to different um, data sets and tries to look it on the, vert the vertical rows, right, on these vertical columns. That's what it's looking for, the rows and the columns here. Um, and a lot of times what I use it on for work is basically employee number because that is a unique identifier. And I always try to go off of that first. But with this data set here, I just have uh, some first names and they're all unique first names. So we can use that here. So if you see on this table here, I have some some columns here with the first name, last name. I have these people date of birth. And in another way, it's easy to get the age here. It's really easy. We can just create a formula and get the age from today's date uh, minus the date of birth to get that. But just want to use this to show you a data set. And it, this, this happens a lot of times at work when I have this one data set here and I'm missing a value that I can't pull it from the system that I'm running a report out of. So I have to use a, another a report to pull the data that I'm looking for and use it by this unique identifier here. So what I have here is that I want to go to my next sample here. We actually have the ages here. So we're just going to pretend like this, what we use here at the ages here, and we want to bring these ages from here over to here using this right this this first column here right guys so what we're going to do is and it's basically similar if you know how to use it in excel it's the same we're going to use equal and it's going to bring up your function your function menu right because just like in excel and then we're going to start typing in vlookup and as you see here it's coming up there you're going to do your open parentheses and with the first one and this is the exact same way that we do it here is that you want to pull over the left most the left most column and that's going to be your unique identifier that's going to be in both data sets. So once again, let me slow it down a little bit. We're going to go here and we're going to find the leftmost column here. And this would be Sophia. And in the second data set, it needs to be the leftmost column as well. Okay, guys. So what we're going to do here is just click on Sophia's name. And that's going to give us that. We're going to put a comma. And then now what we want to do is go to the second tab. And we want to compare. And we want to want the system to use this data set, right? So we're going to go here and I, what I do is highlight it all, go over to the numbers of the information, what I need. So if I need the age, I go here, highlight it. And what it's going to do now is going to use this table as the reference table. So it's going to look into here to find the number we're going to look for. We're going to use comma one more time. And now we need to find the column that we need to pull in and it goes by numbers. So, right. So we're going to look at the A, B, C, D. We want to pull over D. So instead of using A, B, C, D, we want to use numbers and we assign those numbers to the start from the left to the right. So A will be one, B will be two, C will be three, four will be D. And if we want to do more, we will also have E here and E will be, what is that? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, right? But in this case, we want one, two, three, four. So I'm going to type in number four comma. And then now we can either type in true or false. And 99% of the time, what I look for is false. because it's going to turn the exact value. But if you do put in true, it can pull up a, uh, what is it called? It's just a, a, not a exact value, but the value that's close enough. So a close match basically. So it'll pull a close match. But what I want here is I want the exact value. So I'm going to type in false close parentheses. And then I hit enter. And then you see back in that first sheet here that we have is pulling the person's age. As you can see here, it's pulling their age. So now we have this age here. And with normally with Microsoft um, Excel, what I would do is just drag from here 
and drag down and it will pull the numbers down but you don't have that option in um, numbers or it's a little different. You, you actually can do it. It's a little different. It took me a while to figure it out, guys. It's this little yellowish this, this dot here. You will grab that and pull it down and it will copy the formula down as well. And as you can see, that is how you perform the lookup in Apple numbers. It's basically the same, pretty simple, the same as in Excel. Um, I just wanted to make this video just to show you guys that it's possible. And we can try it one more time on another example I have. So this is like another thing that we use here. It's like, uh, maybe a party code. These are unique, unique identifiers, right? We have a price here, but we need the name. And somehow in the, the, the system or whatever I'm using to run this report, it couldn't pull the name. It only pulls the codes. And that happens sometimes in different universes. If you use Webby and different report writing systems, it may not have the name. It may have the, the name code or the location code or the party code as we use in here. So I want to bring in the official name that's aff affiliated with this. So what I'm going to do here is just once again, equal, it's going to bring up, okay, the lookup, okay, open parentheses, and then we're going to go to the leftmost column. It's going to be that one, comma. We're going to go back to our party code that actually has the names. We want to highlight the area we want, go all the way down. We want all of that, and you see it highlights that, comma. And once again, what we want to bring over is, is b the B column, right? We want to bring over this B column, and actually this B column is what? One, two. So we're going to type in two comma and you want that exact name so we're going to type in false close parentheses enter and you see it brought over green so it's telling you that party code one is equal to green and don't mind the prices i just made that up for this video but party code one is equal to green guys so as you can see if we want to bring them all down the yellow dot here click drag bring it all down and we have it all here and you can just double click here and it will span it for you but basically, guys, if you have any questions about VLOOKUP in Excel, I'm going to make a video on in, in Google as well so you guys will know how to use it in Google. Um, just let me know. And if you have any questions or any suggestions how I can make this video better or anything how to use numbers a little better or other examples you want to use from, my, from Apple's numbers, just let me know. Place a comment below. And I'll be happy to make that video or research it and find out how to do it in numbers as well because I recently switched over to this Apple M1 Mac mini, and I don't have Excel on here. Actually, I have it on a PC, but I want to just try to use numbers since it's free, use the, the Apple suite and see if it's, if it's comparable to what Microsoft does. And so far it's comparable. It's a little different. Um, there's a little learning curve, but for the most part, you can do everything you need to do here. All right, guys. Thank you. Once again, Scoop P. See you in the next video. Peace.